So you're ready to start that packaged food business dream. You're going to turn your passion into a profitable food business and you're wondering how you can really maximize your profit, especially when you're just starting out. For the best packaged food advice, I invite you to subscribe to this YouTube channel, Food Business Success and be notified when I release new videos all about starting a packaged food business. When you are just starting out as a food business, your expenses are going to be high. You're producing on a small scale. Um, maybe you're in your home kitchen or you're moving into a commercial kitchen, but there's just no way that you're gonna be able to compete on price. But that said, that doesn't mean that you can't maximize your profit and in this series, I'm going to go over some tips and tricks on how you can really uh, get the most profit out of your business when you're just starting on so that you don't create an expensive hobby, but you actually are creating a profitable food business. Watch this video to the end to get my first tip in a series of videos all about creating profit and starting a profitable food business whether that be for farmers markets, maybe you wanna put your product online, or you wanna go into wholesale, or a combination of all three. I'm Sari Kimball, I'm the creator of Food Business Success, and I have helped hundreds of food business entrepreneurs start and grow a profitable packaged food business. Comment below and let me know what type of food business you are thinking about starting or growing. And be sure to subscribe to this channel below so that you get updates on future videos all about starting a successful packaged food business. So here's the thing. Profit is really a pretty simple equation. It is your sales minus your expenses, right? If we simplify it down to the basic formula. So the trick, of course, is to increase your sales and to decrease your expenses. So I'm gonna take you through my first tip on how to do that. However, I want to uh, invite you to watch a video that I created uh, all about whether you should start that food business with some questions to ask yourself ahead of time. So when we break it down, we're gonna really talk just about expenses in this series of videos. So there are really two types of expenses in your business that you have control over. Uh, the first one is our cost of goods sold. Uh, you also will hear abbreviated COGS frequently. Um, and this is really everything that goes into creating a product, a minimum viable product that is ready to sell to somebody. So it is that jar of salsa or the bag of cookies that's ready to hand off to a potential buyer. The other type of expense is what we call overhead expenses. And you actually would have two um, categories within that, a fixed expense and a variable expense. But we're not gonna get into that here. So let's actually, we're gonna really dig into just one aspect of your cost of goods sold. But let me tell you what the four parts that make up a cost of goods sold. And I did do a video um, all about this as well. So, uh, your cost of goods sold has four things. It has the ingredients to make the product. It has the packaging that you need uh, to wrap around the product to have something to sell, and that's also your labels, those kind of things. And then it consists of two labor components. So your active time to make the product and your active time to package it. At the end of the day, you put all those four things together and you have whatever your cogs are, what that price point is uh, for selling your product, that's your cost. And then we go up from there um, to really price it accurately. And I do have a mini course that I uh, offer through foodbizsuccess.com uh, that goes over pricing your product uh, for profit. But let's go back and we're gonna dig into just one aspect of your cogs today and that is your ingredients. So in this video, I'm gonna give you two uh, hacks, two tips about how to maximize your profit just in the category of your recipe in underneath your cogs. So the first one 
And well, here's the two. One is efficiency and one is consistency. And they're pretty interrelated, um, but you do need to get both correctly if you wanna grow your business and maximize your profits. So the first thing that I ask my clients to do is to um, turn their recipe into weights and fluid ounces across the board. So let's take cookies, for example. A cookie recipe, when you're making a small batch, it makes a dozen or two dozen cookies. That's a very, um, it's a consumer type recipe, right? It's for making something at home in your home kitchen. So it's gonna have teaspoons and tablespoons and cups. Um, and of course, liquids are typically in fluid ounces. But what you wanna do is go through and you're working on, we're gonna create a formula, not a recipe. This is the key to both efficiencies and consistency. So take that recipe on a small scale, and then I want you to turn everything into weights and fluid ounces. So it could be in grams or it could be in ounces, um, whichever one you prefer, but be consistent. So if you do grams, do all grams. If you do ounces, do all ounces. It's ideal to do it that way. So the way you're gonna do this is by getting a digital kitchen scale and you are gonna, let's say we're making cookies, so you're gonna put that bowl on the scale, you're gonna zero it out, so we're not taking in the weight of the bowl, and then you're gonna measure that cup of flour, you're gonna put it in the bowl, write that down, um, and think about it like a cup of flour could be a very different weight depending on how tightly you pack it, whether it's sifted or not, the level that it's at, so, you wanna get really consistent, um, and the way to do that is by turning your cups and your teaspoons, all of that into ounces or grams. Now, you want to go ahead and make that recipe, cook those cookies off. Um, also, really monitor your cooking time and the uh, temperature of the oven. So you're coming up with a formula that's going to be consistent over time. So make the small scale and make sure it tastes good, that it's how you want it. You might need to tweak things, right? Because that cup of flour could be very different um, under different circumstances. Then when you have it correct on a small scale, now I want you to multiply it, let's say by five. So go ahead and make that recipe in a much larger batch, multiply everything out. You can see why it's so much more efficient to do it that way, because um, it's a lot easier to multiply ounces than it is to multiply teaspoons and tablespoons and cups. It's also gonna be a lot easier because you can just dump in the weights um, and you're good to go rather than having to scoop out a cup at a time. So this is the formulation process. You can see that you need to take your home recipe and really turn it into something that anybody could multiply by any number, let's say 200, and you're gonna make you know 2,400 cookies with this. Um, but you want that to be super formulaic, not a home recipe. It's gonna really maximize your efficiency and your consistency. So the other area that you wanna think about uh, when we're maximizing our profit just within our recipe is the consistency and the efficiency of the final product. So in our cookie example, we're gonna to want to have our cookies come out the same size, the same shape, and the same weight every single time. It's fine when you're doing home, you know, home cooking and it looks like the cookies are all about the same size. But when you start going into selling in farmer's markets or online or uh, going into wholesale, consistency of product is gonna be everything. Because remember, you also need to put on your label that net weight or the net fluid ounces. So my recommendation, here's my tip, is that you need to find some tools based on your product type that are going to get you really accurate end results. So in our cookie example, I would look at some restaurant supply stores, maybe online or if you have one in your area, and I would look for tools like, in our case, a two ounce scoop, right? and then maybe a weight that we're gonna be able to flatten the cookies. So those are the two things that would help me be, A, it's gonna actually help me be super efficient, and it's gonna keep things really consistent. 
So you want to actually create a process that if you were hit by a bus tomorrow, which I hope you're not, um, but that somebody could come in, follow your formula, and then follow your process, and it's going to make the same exact cookie every single time. So I recommend writing it down, taking photos or a video. You want to be really specific and say, I'm going to scoop this two ounce scoop, I'm going to flatten it off, I'm going to make sure it's packed, flatten it off, and then I'm going to put it on the tray, and then I'm going to use this certain weight and I'm going to leave it on for five seconds each time or give this amount of pressure. Um, and it's, I want it to be a half an inch in um, height, something like that. So you want to be really specific with your process and then exactly how long does it need to bake and is it in the middle rack or the top rack, etc. And so that you can then repeat this over and over and over again and get that very consistent product. Check out my other videos on how to maximize your profit and I'm going to go through some other factors of your COGS, your cost of goods sold, so that you can really maximize every piece of that as you go along to start a profitable food business. So are you ready to jump in? I highly encourage you to download my free business checklist. The link is below in the notes and you just simply click on the link. You're going to give me your name and email and then it'll be delivered right to your inbox so you can really start checking things off and know that you have set up a legitimate business right from the start. So what other questions do you have for me about starting a food business? I'd love to know what you need answered so that I can create new videos on topics all around all about starting a packaged food business. I also invite you, it really helps me a lot if you subscribe to this channel and if you hit like and write a comment. So thank you for doing that. If you want to join a community of like-minded food business entrepreneurs, I want to encourage you to go check out my monthly coaching membership option at foodbizsuccess.com. This is a very low cost way for you to have access to a food business expert, that's me, Sari Kimball, and you get twice a month coaching calls live in a group setting, so you can ask me your questions about your food business. I also give you a bonus resource of the month, and you get access to my private Facebook group so that you can ask questions of your peers and also of me and get some quick answers. And that's gonna do it for me on this video all about maximizing your profit through your cost of goods sold, specifically around your ingredients. If you like this video, again, please click on the thumbs up, leave me a comment and subscribe to this channel. I am all about helping you start a profitable food business, not an expensive hobby.